Okay, this video will illustrate uh, how to create calendar contact appointments or for leads accounts uh, in BCM. I was asked this question before, um, how can I make certain things like a kind of like a to-do list maybe or uh, to remind myself through the calendar um, that I have to do something that pertains to a contact, a lead, or an opportunity. So I went on and installed a fresh uh, BCM uh, copy on my computer. Now every time I do something with BCM I usually install a brand new copy on top of it to override my previous changes because I, I like things to be out of the box. So I, I'd already removed the business contacts and the accounts tabs and I only left the leads tab because I'm gonna specifically uh, stay focused on leads and more importantly is you want to be able to manage your time uh, and you want to be able to remember to call back people and it's very important that when you speak to a prospect that you're able to follow up with them uh, quarterly and you'll be able to um, you know know when to call them when not to call them etc so I'm, I'm in a very fresh BCM build right here uh, there's really nothing out of the ordinary here um, there's no no business items or nothing so I'm gonna start from total scratch and show you in this video how I go about uh, doing that so I'm going to go to my business contact manager tab um, in leads and I'm gonna create a new lead and in this case I'm gonna create myself as a lead um, what a better example than use myself so I'm gonna just type in some information about me as if I'm on the phone with a client and I'm taking the client's information. Um, there's no account linked right now. Now, when you customize this, you may find that not all these fields are suitable. Uh, you may want to change the fields. You may want to add different ones. You may want to create different relationships. Uh, at some points, just like Salesforce, you may want to have a, a company. For example, I can use Danger Studio as a company and have myself be a contact or a lead from that company. But in this case, I'm not going to fill this in. Uh, let me just quickly put my email address in here. Uh, and I'm going to add my web address. Well, it's worth putting the HTTP in because we're going to get a hyperlink after we do that. Uh, shortly after, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, oh, let me of course put in a phone number. So my phone number is 347 seven two five oh three one five and let me also you'll notice how it gets automatically formatted with the parentheses the space and the dash uh, now let me put in here a address now another thing about the address I wanted to quickly say is if you press on business you'll actually have a better formatted way of, of putting the address in. I just usually type it straight in. I find it really easy and simple, but in some cases, some people uh, may find it easier if it's just broken apart. And by doing that, um, by clicking on the actual address type uh, button, you'll be able to put in here uh, an address based on you know street, city, state, zip, rather than put it all in a text box. But I, I write pretty formal, so I just added it in that way. Uh, source, of course, is where the person heard about us, and suppose that um, it's a phone call. Uh, so I'm going to put in here, let's say, telemarketing. Uh, and initiated by, I'm going to create a quick campaign, which I already did before, actually still saved. I have a phone call campaign. So when I run a report on phone call, I'll be able to see my name uh, popping up because I was initiated by a phone call campaign. In our case, telemarketing and a phone call. Uh, lead scoring is automatic based whether you fill this in and how you fill this criteria in. Um, doesn't necessarily have to be this criteria. It can absolutely be changed. Uh, additionally, what we can do is, is we can create manual scoring. Um, a lot of people don't use the scoring. The scoring is, is, is for a certain type of industry, really. Um, but for the sake of this, I'm just going to give myself five stars for this example. Uh, I'm just going to mark everything in, and you'll see that the built-in logic is going to automatically score me as five because I'm a fresh lead. I contacted you before. Uh, I was referred, and I have a potential need for the service. So I'm going to create a quick note, a timestamp note, and it's going to be, this is a test BCM record. And I'm going to save and close this. Now, once I'm saved now, the lead is saved. The question now, and this is the question uh, that I, I had before, is how do you know to contact this person again and have it appear 
in your calendar. Now you see I have a fresh calendar. There's really nothing going on in here. Um, let me go back to Business Contact Manager. And how would I go about creating an alert for myself? Um, let's say I just got off the phone with, with myself and I, I've decided that I should give myself a call in a week from now to discuss uh, you know, their thoughts, my thoughts, to see whether I'm interested in the service. So when you open this up, the, the lead contact up, if you look at the ribbon, you'll see that there is a communicate tab. And the communicate tab is very important because using the communicate tab, you're able to create um, these pop-up alerts for you. Uh, now, unlike CRM, CRM has uh, workflows. A workflow is an automatic set of processes that can run um, based on when you fire a certain event. So I can write a workflow in CRM that says that when I save this record or when I change a field, uh, it'll automatically create a series of steps, what I should be doing next. BCM, on the other hand, does not have that option. Unfortunately, it has to be done manually. But it's not necessarily a lot of work. It's actually, it, it's pretty good too, because with CRM, uh, the workflow may fire some additional tasks that may not be required for this contact. Suppose that, uh, you know, I'm not interested in a certain thing, or, you know, a letter wouldn't work with me. Um, having a workflow to create like these eight things may not make sense in my particular case or this particular case. So with BCM, we use the communicate tab and the communicate tab uh, allows us to create uh, actions that have to do with communication. So we have our email button here and obviously if I press this button, it's going to automatically compose an email and autofill um, this leads address, which in this case is my address. Now we also have a meeting request. A meeting request, uh, you, may, you may have had these before, um, when you email somebody uh, for a meeting, you're able to have them press accept, uh, decline, or tentative, and you can choose whether the person, uh, you can choose the type of email that goes out and have the person reply to it. So if I send a meeting request right now, it'll email me, uh, it'll actually ask me to, let me press that button, you see. I can actually put in here details of the meeting, the subject, the location, uh, and the time, and when I hit send, it would automatically send a link to this address, my email address or the leads address, and it'll give me the option of selecting, yes, I will attend this meeting, uh, I may attend this meeting, or I decline. Uh, and you receive the confirmation back in the email, which is very, very cool. But we're not gonna discuss that right now. What I wanna discuss is creating um, uh, tasks, more or less reminders or calendar appointments. And that leads me to the next thing, appointment. The appointment is always the second button down uh, in the communicate tab. And the appointment button allows me to create a reminder. Not just a reminder, but it allows me to create an appointment. But I use it for reminders, and the majority of the world out there uses that for reminders. So let's say the subject will be um, phone, phone call, right? I'm going to make phone call to Elon. I'm going to mark that the subject. And the location, you don't have to bubble it in. None of these are mandatory, but I just put it in just to be more organized with my data. And let's say the phone call should take place exactly one week from now. So when I click on the drop down button on the start time, I'm able to select a week, exactly a week from now, which will be the third. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to select the 31st, the end of the month. And I'm going to write here a quick initial blurb, uh, such as spoke to Elon about services, needs more time to think about it. Please call at first, well, I'll say office number. Now this is all the information I need because now when this pops up, I'll actually be able to open up the lead record right here in the background and I can have a history here in the notes of what me and this lead particularly spoke about and I'll be able to read more information about my previous phone call that when this appointment comes up and I call them back, I'm more knowledgeable about my previous step that I can move forward and I can um, discuss, you know, more potential closing things, like I want to close the deal. So now here, here's where most people get confused. Um, if I hit save and close, I'm not going to get a calendar appointment. What I'm going to get is a BCM appointment. It will not show on the calendar. This is something that I constantly get questioned about. People don't seem to understand why they make these appointments and it never pops in their calendar. They go to their calendar tab and it's empty. Well, the reason is if you save and close an appointment, it's just going to mark it within BCM under the record that you have an appointment pending. However, it does not tie in into the Outlook calendar until 
you click on a certain button. I'm going to show you that button right now. On the ribbon, right, in the appointment ribbon, there is an action called copy to my calendar. This is what you want to be using when you create these reminders. Because not only do you want to use the um, functionality of appointments in BCM, but you also want to have Outlook tie into these appointments because you use Outlook on a regular basis. And BCM is a part of Outlook. But for some reason, when Microsoft built this, they created two entities for appointments. The first entity for appointments is within BCM, which means I can save and close this and it will not be in my Outlook calendar. It's a totally separate entity. The Outlook calendar entity not only saves and closes, but it also copies to the Outlook calendar. So I'm going to click on the copy to my calendar, and you'll see that this just disappeared as if I pressed save and close. Um, and now I can save and close the lead record. So now, whenever I click on Elon, you'll see here on the right corner where I have the, um, the reading pane, you'll be able to see that under communication history, I have a phone call with Elon at 7.31 and, and, and <clears throat> the end of this month, which is July 31st, 2012 at 7 p.m. That's when I marked it. Now, if I go to my calendar and Outlook now, you'll see that I have a brand new entry here, which is a phone call uh, to Elon. You know, you know what I mean? It, it totally copied it in and it set this in for me and now I'm able to do this with as many contacts as I can and I can create additional appointments to pre-fill additional things in here um, so that's really the way to go about it so if, if you were in, curious about how you can get a, uh, a item uh, a communication item such as a meeting or a reminder or a task to pop up in Outlook you'll be using the copy to calendar uh, from the appointment window so in the history of this, if you click on history, you're also able to see a whole list uh, in a hierarchy uh, based on date. And you'll see, I can, uh, you know, all these things are crewed together and they build and they create like a massive uh, historical tree of every single step you took with this person. So eventually, you know when the lead is dead. If you've done too many things or the person needs additional uh, treatment, uh, either call treatment or, or additional emails, uh, you'll be able to do it directly from here. Um, so that, that, in a nutshell, is really what I wanted to explain in this video. I wanted to show you guys basically how we could create a contact and from this contact be able to click on something very simple, one button appointment, and put in a subject such as a uh, mail letter. Mail letter, for example. And I'm always going to use the name because in the calendar I really like to see the name in the subject. It helps me better analyze um, what I'm doing. Um, and the location you can really put in anything but you don't have to put in anything and you can easily select from the drop down just a date and a start time and it's always a 30 minute um a 30 minute cap in between so no matter what time i pick let's say the end of august right um i'm gonna pick let's say nine o'clock you'll see that there's a 30 minute um bump between 9 and 9 30 it'll always add that 30 minute bump between the beginning and the end because microsoft will always assume that it will be um 30 minutes. It'll take you 30 minutes to complete each task. Now, another thing I want to touch on this is also, you'll see under the options uh, portion in the ribbon, you have a reminder and it's set to 15 minutes, right? What that means is that 15 minutes before this item is due, you'll be reminded to do it. So you can actually set this for as much time as you need. So suppose you need to do something big for somebody uh, on, on, let's say, August 31st at 9 p.m. You can set it to remind you five hours before uh, you have to complete this task that you have to do it. And then you can continue snoozing it to be reminded uh, again whether you have to do it or not. I mean, it's a really cool feature, uh, and it's already linked to a record. You don't have to use... In my previous video, I showed what link to record means, but uh, I'm, I'm not going to uh, go in depth in that. Just remember the copy to my calendar tab, and what happens now... And let me close this, and let me close this real quick. What happens now is that in calendar, you're going to have these appointments set in here, so I can just click it, and, and you'll see some information. Um, you know, and, and also have uh, everything I need in here uh, in order to make my call. But the, the very cool thing is that you're going to receive an actual pop-up when you open Outlook on this day, 15 minutes before 7 p.m., I will receive an Outlook pop-up telling me, uh, you know, alert, you have the following meeting or the, the, the follow-up uh, 
task to complete uh, in 15 minutes from now, which is what this is set to. And I can always change the reminder duration. I can go to 30 minutes. I can go to an hour. Um, I could do multiple things. So this is this is a very, very cool thing. And to answer the person's question who had reached me about this, who inspired me to make uh, this video, um, suppose you have multiple tasks tasks per person, right? And it's not just a phone call you want to initiate, but you also want to mail them a letter, you want to um, you want to add them to a mailing list, you want to, you know, do whatever it is that you want to do with a certain person, and you need multiple appointments, you'll be clicking on the appointment uh, tab a couple of times, let's say three times you'll be clicking it. So you'll, you'll be placing a phone call, and then you'll be copying this to your calendar, you'll close it, then you'll click on appointment again, and you'll create, let's say a week after that, you'll create something like like um, mail a letter to residents or send an introduction letter or, you know, whatever it is. Um, and you'll save that. And then you can do it again. And you can have a series of things on your calendar in different days with pop-up alerts um, to help you uh, better stay organized and managed and on top of your leads. So this also works for contacts, right? You can create a, a reminder and a meeting or appointment, rather, um, to send a contract or to request certain things. You can even put in when something is due from somebody. So let's say uh, Elon, in this case, which is me, the lead, told you that I'll get back to you with a certain document uh, by a certain time. You can create uh, an appointment to remind you, hey, this person still hasn't sent in a particular paperwork. And you can always update these things directly from uh, BCM. You can just click on the history tab under show and you can delete and, and add. You can actually add new things in here uh, and delete them as well. So you can create new items, you can remove items. Uh, like I said, and it's a very, very cool thing and it's a very, very nice thing to stay organized and on top of your information. Um, so I'm going to leave it at that. So that's really wanted to show at the video. Uh, with this video, I wanted to show how you can use BCM to track things uh, and stay really organized and on top of your stuff. Uh, so you'll see right here that whenever I click on a new contact, just remember in the reading pan panel, you'll always have uh, an entire tree of items uh, of what communication things had took place before or about to take place. And you can continue doing this. Now this works throughout Outlook. Uh, you'll see that I'm checking my email right now. I'm actually in my inbox right now. And if you look, if I look to my right under calendar, it'll say that I have an upcoming event on Tuesday, and that Tuesday is that phone call that I arranged on BCM. So no matter where I am uh, in Outlook, for example, I'm, I'm able to see my coming appointments. So two things that most people live by is their calendar. Obviously, you always want to go by your calendar. Um, and you're, you're able to see basically everything that that we do from this calendar. So this, in a nutshell, is the answer to that question. Um, and I'll be making maybe more videos about this topic. Uh, but this is a really, really important topic. And I'm really happy that I got around to showing that copy to calendar button because that was really a thing that most people really got confused at. If you don't copy to calendar, you're just going to have to work within BCM, which means that when you navigate through BCM and you click on a certain person, you'll be able to see that appointment uh, meeting with that person. You may even get the reminder for it if you set to get a reminder for it, um, but it will not show in your calendar because you didn't click it. And having the calendar is a really great benefit. Um, if you look at tags also, let me just touch on that real quick. Under communicate, we have the appointment, but under tags, we have the follow-up, right? So follow-up uh, allows you to do, uh, you know, maybe slightly something else. I wouldn't say a calendar meeting, but a follow-up will make reminders for you. It won't allow you exactly what kind of thing it is. You can't kind of label it. You can't give it like a custom tag, like what the follow-up is about. Uh, but if you need to mark something as a follow-up, like a quick follow-up or, or something in that nature, uh, you'll click on follow-up and you could just say follow-up tomorrow. Um, and BCM will, you know, beautifully illustrate that. When you open the contact, you'll see that a, a brand new um, alert, and I wouldn't say an alert, uh, a notification just came up saying follow-up. Start on Saturday, July 28th, um, and that's the follow-up. It won't even tell me a time. It'll just say that on July 28th, I must follow up with this lead. So that's really another cool thing that you can do. Uh, there's multiple ways to stay organized. You can always categorize things, you know, what has to be mailed, what doesn't. You can uh, click on all categories and you can rename categories. You could say requires letter, requires phone call, uh, requires like elevation to a different department if, if needed, um, and, and stuff like that. Uh, and that's it. I hope this answered uh, this person's question and many of your questions. Uh, thank you for watching. I also want to tell you guys that I'm working on a website called bcm 
bcm-2010.com. That's uh, bcm-2010.com. It'll be a website where I'm going to provide builds uh, for BCM as well as these tutorials, videos, and articles. Um, and, and you know, when when it is finally online, right now it's under construction. Uh, it is uh, July 27th, and it's still under construction. But when it does come up online, uh, it'd be cool if you guys went and checked it out because I know there is very lack uh, of resource out there for BCM, and I'm very happy to help people. So thank you very much for watching, and uh, I appreciate it. And thank you for watching my channel again. I've received amazing feedback on my videos, especially the Excel one. Uh, it's my favorite video. Thank you again. Uh, you guys take care. Bye.